Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I'm going to kick this video off discussing NVIDIA's plans for us gamers for the next generation of GPUs as a spanner has been thrown into the works. Let's get into it right after this message from our sponsor. If you've just built a shiny new PC, you'll need a genuine copy of Windows so you can enjoy all of the features such as personalized themes and of course getting rid of that annoying activation watermark. We're partnering with WhoKeys to give you guys great discounts on Windows 10 keys. And throughout November, there's a 30% off discount by using the coupon code RGT during checkout. I've purchased several keys from them in the past under a personal non-RGT affiliated account, and they've all worked flawlessly with delivery being rather quick. After November, the coupon code reverts back to 25% off so if you want to pick up a copy of Windows for as little as $12 or a cheap and legit copy of Office, then check out the links in the video description below and use coupon code RGT. You guys know the story by now. Lovelace will launch late next year and it is of course going to be a high performance upgrade over RTX 30. The 4090, assuming the naming scheme holds, is going to be up to 2.4 times faster, at least that's what I'm hearing, over the RTX 3090 albeit with power budgets being blown into the stratosphere. The highest in SKU is apparently around 500 watts, maybe even 550 watts, which is going to be an hour to your power supply. But on the positive, it's still pretty darn fast. The differences, though, compared to um, RDNA 3, aka Narve 31 and other SKUs, it is going to be a monolithic die. So this is one of the reasons that the power consumption figures for 31, I'm hearing is going to be about 375, 385 watts anyway, so obviously significantly less, and also should give AMD the performance advantage over NVIDIA, although I do believe NVIDIA could still have some benefits, such as ray tracing performance, but that's getting kind of complicated in terms of the topic. But what we have known for quite some time is NVIDIA do have an MCM or chiplet-based design in the works, and this, of course, is known as Hopper. We haven't known a whole bunch of details concerning Hopper, only that, again, it is chiplet-based and presumably would be a lot faster as a result. But there is a very interesting report floating around from DigiTimes. I'll, of course, link it in the video description. They state that RTX 40 will launch late next year. I'm personally hearing Q3 or Q4. But very interestingly, that Hopper is not going to launch much after RTX 40, aka Lovelace. The difference is it's going to purely be for data center, so it's going to be for AI, high-performance computing, that type of thing, which leaves us with an awful lot of questions. Firstly, what exactly are NVIDIA's plans for gamers going forward? I mean, that's really the big one, you know, what will actually follow up? Is it going to be a variant of Hopper eventually? And also, what about the data center? Does that mean that we're going to go from current straight to... Um, straight to hopper or are we going to get some intermediate architecture it's it's all very interesting now yeah just a quick word about the performance numbers of course as well specifications anyway of um of uh, lovelace so apparently it's going to have 18,432 cuda cores and the clock frequency is around 2.5 gigahertz which is a pretty nice increase it's going to be built on tsmc's 5nm process just for those wondering and this, of course, means that NVIDIA are going to have a nice performance boost over the current generation. Now, I did ask a couple of sources about this, and one person told me, essentially, that, yeah, there's a good chance Hopper is going to launch a lot earlier than what a lot of people believed it would. And another person also told me that it's going to possibly feature GDDR7 memory. Now, again, this is only from one individual, so... I generally don't believe something 100% until multiple people have told me the same thing, but I do find it rather interesting that GDDR7 was mentioned. Either way, this is going to be very interesting going forward in terms of their competition against AMD. Now, obviously, AMD have been kind of, well, let's say, using separate architectures for a while now. So, obviously, we have RDNA for gaming, which obviously is RDNA 1, RDNA 2, and now RDNA 3 next year. And then they have CDNA for the data center, which is basically a compute-based architecture. So, it's going to be very interesting if NVIDIA does this and continues to do this, because 
quite frankly, NVIDIA, you know, having kind of separate architectures or tailoring an architecture specifically for a purpose is not exactly uncommon for the company. They've done it numerous times in the past. And another thing that I've said recently, you know, from one of my sources, is that NVIDIA are going to be a lot faster when it comes to iterating upon architectures. They're going to really be embracing, if you will, Intel's old TikTok um, Candace. Now, it's going to be very curious to me how all of this plays out because we've also seen a recent, uh, you know, comment from one of Intel graphics team and he basically said pretty much right off the bat that it's not going to be unlikely that we see a new architecture from Intel in terms of graphics anyway, pretty much every year, which again matches what one of my own reports said. So it's going to be very curious to see how Intel and NVIDIA and uh, he all managed to compete against one another, especially in the light of yet another news story which has been floating around. And I really want to talk to you guys about this one. Now, um, I'd like to give credit, of course, to videocards.com for this particular piece of news. And basically, we have a new graphics card, which is Fantasy One. You've got to love the name, if nothing else. And it is a GPU which features 32 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory. And the manufacturer is known, known as InnoCillin. Hopefully I've pronounced that correctly. So, yeah, it, this uh, press conference is showing off a wide range of cards, a couple of different designs which look, at least in my opinion, fairly cool. Now, in terms of performance, it's not huge. We're looking at around 6 to 7 T-flops of performance. This is single precision, just for clarification's sake. However, there is an important thing here. So, basically, older Chinese GPUs, they lacked the ability to, well handle any modern API, whereas this is not the case here. So it can run OpenGL, OpenGL ES, OpenCL, Vulkan, and DirectX. Obviously the most important one being DirectX, but they didn't specify which version of the API was supported. So it could be anything from DX1 all the way up to DX12. So the IP has been provided to them by Imagination Technologies. So it's going to be very interesting if we have yet further players in the GPU arena. Honestly, when it comes to profitability, of course, graphics cards are just absolutely printing money in more ways than one at the moment. I don't necessarily know how competitive they're going to be because, as everyone knows, it's not just like, oh, we've developed silicon. And these cards, they haven't given exactly tons of benchmarks, so we don't know how they're going to stack up in games, for example, like we don't know the frame rate of it in, say, Doom Eternal versus an NVIDIA card or an AMD card or whatever. But on paper, it looks around an RTX 2060, although memory bandwidth is going to be an interesting one, you know, as well with the bus configuration that we're seeing here. Either way, though, you know, it's not just in terms of the specifications of the GPU, which, of course, are important. And this is a discussion I've had with some folks over at Intel Graphics as well. Like, you actually need to not just create a high-performance GPU, but it needs a whole plethora of other crap, that's a technical term, uh, to really make the GPU feel like it's feature complete. It's okay for it to run like DirectX 12, but... Does it have stable drivers, which is obviously a very important thing? What about, you know, capture, like say NVIDIA Shadow Play alternatives? All of these things are going to be really part and parcel of a good, you know, graphics experience. I do, however, expect these cards to start catching up eventually. It's going to be very curious what the state of the market is going to be in a couple of years' time. I suspect it's going to be a lot different to what we have now. And I, I honestly would not be at all surprised if one of the best, uh, you know, co PC combinations, and to be honest, there is something that kind of tickles me about this, would be like an AMD CPU for a budget system and an Intel GPU. Like, I don't know. I just absolutely love the idea of the role reversal. It, it just, it pleases me on a deep level just for, just for the lols. But um, yeah, um, I mean, it's to be very curious. Oh, speaking of AMD uh, CPU, just a small update, and this is from a tweet from Grayman. Uh, basically, he stated that the mass production of the Zen 3D chips has basically started mid this month. So if you're watching this in a couple of days' time, we're talking, of course, in November. And he believes, therefore, that they basically should be available on store shelves 
um, in February. However, just to be clear, this is his speculation. He's not actually leaking this. This is not like official information, or should I say like a, an actual leak. It's just a guesstimate based upon, you know, the timelines. Honestly, those timelines kind of do make sense and do tally up quite closely to what AMD have said officially. But at the end of the day, we still don't know the exact release date of the, you know, Ryzen V caches. I will say that I'm very interested to see how these things perform in a number of different applications and tests. I'm going to be curious to see how well these chips uh, perform against uh, Intel's older lake in different tasks. It's going to be an interesting one to be sure. With that all said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, leave a likey on the video, even though YouTube have done weird things with likes and all of that right now. but that's beside the point and also of course subscribe to the channel with that said thank you very much for checking out the video i'll see you soon take care of yourselves bye for now